hi guys welcome back to part two of our chemistry video i'm trusting that you watched the previous video which introduced you to the periodic table and the periodic trends also period three which introduced you to sodium to argon all right we're going to test our knowledge today by working some cape unit one past paper questions on the chemistry of the elements so get out your past paper copies and let's begin so we'll start with the 2009 paper and the first question says define the term electronegativity for one mark so one statement electronegativity is just the ability of an atom to attract electron from other corresponding atoms next question consider the chlorides of period three one Describe the structures of the chlorides. What are the chlorides of period three again? What did I say in the video? We said that all the elements except for chlorine and argon, they all form chlorides, right? So we have sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, aluminum chloride, they all form chlorides. But the question is asking us for the structure. Sodium and magnesium, they are giant ionic structures. Aluminum is a simple molecular structure. Likewise, the chlorides of silicon, phosphorus, and sulfur, they all have simple molecular structures. And the second part, describe the differences in the pH of the solutions form when the chlorides react with water. Remember the last part of the video, what I specifically said about the chlorides and their pH? Sodium chloride which is an ionic compound dissolved in water to form a neutral solution. Aluminum chloride is hydrolyzed by water to form an acidic substance. Similarly with phosphorus and sulfur, their chlorides are acidic. And then part three, write the equation for the reaction of silicon tetrachloride and water. So you will have SI... Cl4 plus H2O will give you silicon dioxide and hydrochloric liquid. Silicon dioxide is a solid. All right, moving on to part C, which shows us this equation. Let's read the corresponding question. Chlorine forms a colorless solution P when dissolved in cold sodium hydroxide. This reaction, which is represented by the reaction here, is referred to as a disproportionation reaction. And the first question says, what is meant by the term disproportionation? So a disproportionation reaction is a reaction in which a single element is being oxidized and reduced simultaneously. Cool, right? This chlorine atom, look at it. Cl2 gas has a oxidation number of zero, is being reduced here all the way to this chlorine ion minus one and it's also being oxidized to chlorate ion which is plus one moving on to the second part of this same question a suspension is formed when excess silver ions are added to solution p on filtering the suspension and heating the filtrate, white precipitate is formed. Given the fact that the filtrate contains both silver ions and chlorate ions, account for the presence of the white precipitate on heating. If you add the silver nitrate to the solution with the chloride ions, the silver ion is going to combine with the chlorine ion to form the silver chloride precipitate, which is the white precipitate that they stated, while the other ions are going to act as spectator ions as they won't participate in this reaction. A simple salt, S, when treated with concentrated sulfuric acid, produces dense white fumes, T, and a red-brown gas, U. Tea on dissolving in water produces a colorless 
solution which turned blue litmus paper red. Hmm? Hint, hint. And gives a cream precipitate V on the addition of silver ions. And the first question says, identify T, U, and V. All right, let me clean my board. I can't find my duster, so I'm using my hands. I need to find T, U, and V. T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. The thing we need to figure out is what are the reactants in this process? We got a hint that the first reactant was concentrated sulfuric acid. So H2SO4. We'll talk about this more when we look at the halogens. This salt is sodium bromide. Of this reaction is sodium hydrogen sulfate and hydrogen bromide gas. The reaction is going to proceed further because the bromide is going to reduce the sulfur. So this hydrogen bromide is going to react with this sulfuric acid. So we'll have hydrogen bromide plus sulfuric acid to give us sulfur dioxide, mean gas, and water so we can start to figure out these letters right so a simple salt s so that means s would be sodium bromide treated with sulfuric acid produce a dense white fume t so the dense white fume would be the hydrogen bromide gas And a red-brown gas, U. The red-brown gas is bromine. I know some of you might be thinking that the dense white fume is the sulfur dioxide. It's not so. There is now T on dissolving in water produce a colorless solution which turns blue litmus paper red. Look at this beautiful clue. Turns blue litmus paper red. What is that? We know that an acidic substance is going to turn the blue litmus paper red. So this substance must be an acidic solution. So when hydrogen bromide is dissolved in water, it forms hydrobromic acid. The question also says it gives a cream precipitate V. Another beautiful clue. Gives a cream precipitate V on addition of silver ions. This is because we spoke about qualitative analysis with silver ions already. Cream precipitate V is silver bromide. Part two of the question, write the formula for the ions present in S. What was S again? Sodium bromide. So this is the bromide ion. Part three, write the equation for the formation of the cream precipitate V. What was the cream precipitate again? Silver bromide. So we, to form silver bromide, we need an influx of silver ions and bromide ions. We need to get the silver ions from the silver nitrate, AgNO3, bromine from the potassium bromide, silver bromine, Putting in our state symbol. This is the end of 2009. Let's move over to another past paper.